overview of what um, Jung Linke or Young Left. <laughs> okay, now with the proper recorder. Um, yeah, give, give you a short overview of what Jung Linke or Young Left is doing and where are we coming from on an analytical um, um, level. And maybe, maybe also, what are our goals or what are our plans for the upcoming months? Um, before, before I start, my name is Max, or Max if you like, and I'm active, uh, an active member of Junge Linke um, yeah, for, for a couple of years, meanwhile. Yeah, so I, and I'll take this, this task of presenting the organization today. Um, yeah, Shadow of Today. Originally, I thought we will be a bit a smaller group, so I planned an uh, introduction where everybody um, is like a bit um, telling us where they are coming from, maybe if they are a part of the Platypus Affiliated Society or not, and so on and so forth. I guess we'll skip that. Um, um, but yeah, maybe we'll have time afterwards for informal or to find out in informal talks. Um, so I will just start right away with the overview on where Junge Linke is coming from, what we are doing right now and where we want to go. And afterwards we will have time for questions and discussion um, if needed. Okay, so first question is where, where is Junge Linke coming from on an um, ideological or analytical um, level? What is the, the whole organization about? And in the following, you will find um, a couple of quotes, and all of them are. Um, Hello. Uh, you want to join or? Okay. <laughs> he doesn't. Doesn't matter. Um, all of them are part of a um, paper of self-conception um, we passed last um, January. So. In our paper of self-conception, it says at the beginning, our goal is unified humanity, cooperatively, co cooperatively producing what it needs for a living, a world in which housing, food, and medical care are accessible for all, and permanent peace is established. So we start with this pretty, pretty broad, um, broad um, perspective. And what it basically means is that we want to organize um, society uh, in a manner that our economy is working um, to, to fulfill our basic human needs and our economy is not working anymore um, to produce profit for those who own the, mean, who own the means of production. So um, it also is pretty clear that um, how society is organized today um, this, this goal of an economy producing what we need in our day-to-day -day life um, on a cooperative um, level um, isn't fulfilled or can't be fulfilled since society is built on private, prop or private property of, um, of the means of production and so, and so um, economies on a very basic level um, 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 there is there is um, a competition in, instead of um, working together for for um, producing what we need. So in this situation, um, we basically do two things, or we want to do two things. First, we want to make the best out of it for the working class and for the, those fractions of the middle class um, possibly associated with it. And because we know that society as we see it um, is no, um, not necessarily this way, um, we want to change it on a fundamental basis. And here it says, um, therefore we work for a liber liberated society and this society we call communism. So, what are we talking about? Um, 
But what I'm, what am I talking about when I say we work for, for this and we work for that? It's basically, basically you can, uh, you can say there are three branches of what we are doing. The first branch is education. So to successfully reach a liberated society, we need to understand the world we are living in. Via various educational work, we create spaces for analyzing what's going wrong today and we are creating where, where change, change can possibly start. Um, so meaning we have different educational programs from really um, like workshops lasting one and a half hours um, on a work day, in the evening, um, in our, in our um, um, the, the groups in, in different districts of town and so on, but could also mean like um, planning seminars which last for like several weekends um, and which are more, more advanced, go more into detail and so on. Like there is a, a, a range um, of educational work we're doing or could also be, could also be reading circles, um, for example. We do on a federal level. Um, the second branch is um, political action, um, or you could say campaign work. So we are political action, we call attention to our critique and perspective of, for society and get in touch with thousands of people. So meaning, for example, last, last year we had a campaign um, around public um, public spaces and how public spaces are more and more privatized in Vienna and why it is important um, to stop this process and to keep them available to everybody um, no matter if they can buy for I don't know drinks for example or not. And the third branch is or a part or I'll, I'll read it first and then explain afterwards through, through lift solidarity, for example, within our Lernnetz program, we connect young people, help each other, and entrench the experience of concrete potency. I'm not sure if that's the right word, actually. It's Wirkmächtigkeit in German. Um, like, concrete experience of we can do something or we can actually do something um, in our day-to-day -day life. Um, so par part of this is what you could call or what people could call organizing. So organizing people around a specific topic um, and there, but with no intention about incorporating, uh, incorporating them into our organization directly. So for example, Lernnetz is, an, is a network where we organize, um, um, what's it, Nachhilfe of English? Tutoring? Tutor, yeah. Thanks. <laughs> um, where we, we organize tutoring um, on a free basis. So like people who want to offer um, lessons can give them and people who, who need um, tutoring but can't afford it um, can come to us. And um, yeah, we, we try, to, we try to, to manage that they get their, um, they get, um, tutoring on a, free, on a free basis. And there are quite, quite a few people active in Lernnetz who, who aren't part of Junge Linke and who never will be part of Junge Linke, but still it's okay because um, it's just, uh, uh, yeah, it's not, uh, not the, the whole idea about, about it is that, that you can join Lernnetz without joining Junge Linke and just working with us on this, on this single issue without, without um, needings of like um, do, all, do all other stuff or join in all, in all the other stuff we are doing. Um, so with this, with this three branches of what we are doing, like educational work, campaigns, and organizing in mind, the question is what, 
what are we talking about or what are we discussing right now? Where do we want to go? And um, I guess one important point is that we are planning to incorporate a broader um, cultural program um, in our activities. Um, an example would be like soccer tournaments or, re or soccer um, training on a regular basis or self cor courses of self-defense um, and so on. But also, also I don't know, like, um, there, there, are, um, there are ideas about establishing a, a chorus, I guess, is the English word, like singing together. Um, yeah, and this, this is a big, big issue on, on the upcoming agenda. Um, and um, we decided to focus more on, on, this, on, this, on this organizing aspect and on um, organizing people around their day-to-day -day struggles. So, for example, rising prices um, or housing as the Communist Party, or, in, or ho housing is actually what the Communist Party is going to do or what they are already um, doing, but like in this, in this direction we also want to um, gain more experience. And Besides that, we'll, we will have internal discussions the next month, or the upcoming month, till, till our Congress in January. And there we'll, um, yeah, we'll decide, or make, like, decide about the general plan on what's, what's going um, to happen next year. And starting about the... Um, Congress in generally, January. Maybe at the at the end, I can um, give you some short um, overview of um, how Junge Linke is structured, or how how are we working on uh, um, how the the whole organization is built. And it's basically that um, we work on a federal level. Um, so um, Austria has nine federal states, and we are active in all of them. Um, and once a year we have a federal congress, which is the sort of highest, highest institution um, um, of the organization. And at this federal congress, um, fundamental questions are discussed and fundamental questions are decided upon. And um, this um, federal congress also votes for a, a federal executive board, um, which is um, which is um, lead, leading the organization throughout the year. And then, like, this structure is repeating itself on a state and on a district level. And, yeah. And so we are right now, um, when, when I talk about we, I talk about a couple hundred members and then probably a couple hundred more who aren't members but who are showing up um, at events from time to time or I don't know who are interested in what we're doing but but aren't aren't directly involved and as a lot as an actual last point um, in in the last discussion with with Malmö somebody asked um, how Malmö is positioning themselves to to Kabul, like to the communist party and we are, and within Junge Link, it was quite a, we had quite a, quite a big um, discussion about actually this this point, and um, I guess the the, the comrade also said that um, KPÖ is kind of in a process of renewal, or like so, sort of getting their shit together again, <laughs> and. So currently we are like we are establishing pretty close ties to them and working together um, on a federal and and state level and um, yeah also also we have this like this saying that when we are part of a communist movement this communist movement um, needs a party and this par party is right now um, the KPÖ. And what we are going, to, what we want to do, um, is be the youth movement of this party, um, but not, 
as you uh, of this of we want to be the, the youth organization of this movement but not of the party so we are we are in a close relationship but we are not part of KPU. so if you want to find further information online you can either have a look on our website but it's all of it basically is in German so um, yeah that's in this context somehow exclusive but you also find information on um, in Instagram and Facebook or you can write an email um, yeah, can I ask a question? yeah yeah we can just yeah, let's, let's just start with, with I, I questions. Sure if I was driven. No, no, um, uh, let's just go for it. Yeah, just on the last point you touched, um, why did you emphasize on that you want to be, be the, organiz the youth organization to the movement but not to the party? Why is it important to make that distinction? Mm -hmm. I guess one, one important point was that, for example, um, or lots, lots of youth organizations spend their time with changing their party. Um, we don't want to spend our time with changing the KPÖ. If Junge Linke members want to change KPÖ, go and like get a membership there and change KPÖ there. Um, but as an organization, um, we just have a different focus. And we are not doing it like, for example, the Social Crem Democrats do where they basically, the whole, the whole self-legitimation is, oh, we are going to, to change the social, social democratic party from within. And that's like, yeah, we don't. That's the difference, I would say. Um, um, you said that still you have like um, very strong ties <coughs> to the KPÖ. What is the tie then between KPÖ and you? Mm. One, I would say one one tie is pretty practical. That you can you can be um, part of Junge Linke until you're 30 years old, and um, quite a few of our members who are who are getting too old, they are going to KPÖ, and while going to KPÖ, they they transport uh, all the experiences um, they 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 had within Junge Linke into KPÖ and therefore, of course, are, are changing KPÖ and are um, somehow, um, I mean, they, they become KPÖ members, but they don't forget where they were coming from. So, um, and um, yeah, besides, besides, I mean, there are um, formal and informal discussions um, there are like shared rooms. Um, there are um, campaigns where we work together. Um, yeah, so for example, um, he like you, and then maybe back there, and then in front. I'm just wondering about your. Uh, I've got <coughs> no clue about anything happening in Austria, so. It's a very simple question. I'm curious about your organization and relationship then to the KJ, the communist, the communist youth mm -hmm. of Austria. So, yeah, what's, what, is there anything happening, kind of like, are you in a competition or something? I don't know, I've got, because my, what I've heard and seen, not just today, but, but before, it's like, okay, what well, is Jung Link trying to, you know, push aside the Kajot and what is the Kajot saying about that? I'm just curious. Mm -hmm. What is, not just that, just generally the organization relationship. Mm -hmm. So, maybe, maybe when we're talking about the, the whole Kajot thing, so Kajot also means communist youth organization or communist youth of Austria. So um, I just said, basically, we are the communist youth of Austria. So <laughs> um, I guess that's where, where the question is coming from. So, and uh, no problem. He's a member of the Kajot. Sorry, one question, 
where the recorder is needed or in the other room? In the other room. Okay. 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 Um, yeah, I wasn't quite sure if you're joking. Or not. <laughs> uh, so the whole the whole situation is that years ago, like way ago, uh, the Communist Party on a federal level basically split. Like they split in um, a federal organization and an organization which is um, just active in Styria, which is a province of Austria, and. There are no ties between the Communist Party on the federal level and the KVD. But there are pretty strong ties between the Communist Party in Styria and the KVD. So the Communist Party in Styria recognizes the KVD as their youth movement or youth organization. Um, and over, over the last two years, I would say, there is a, quite a, a positive process um, going on. Uh, the process where uh, um, the KPÖ or the different um, um, state organizations of KPÖ are moving closer together. Um, they started talking again. They started by like, campaigning again, and so forth and so on. So the, the KPÖ is right now um, gr growing back or like um, becoming one organization again. So, and in this. While the KPÖ is um, becoming one organization again, we basically have the situation that the KPÖ is still still got the KPÖ as their youth movement, and the KPÖ on the federal level basically got us. Um, but not yeah, not officially, but I mean, yeah. the, the KPÖ basically in, exists in two two um, federal states. So they exist in Syria and they exist in in Vienna. So, yeah, in, in most states there can't, can't really be any competition because there is nobody to compete about. Um, um, so, yeah, we, we have this sort of um, parallel structure, but right now, we're, right now we have it and we are working together and um, yeah, co cooperating where it, seems, where it seems useful to us. Um, yeah, we'll see how it turns out at the end. Um, I guess you you are next. Yeah. Um, thanks for uh, thanks for holding this. I I um, you know you talked a lot about the kind of um, activism and organisational work that you're doing, and you know the um, encouraging people to I don't know realise the kind of concrete potency mm -hmm. of their activism. I'm sure that's one of those terms that doesn't quite translate into English, but I think I get the gist. Um, of course, like, you know, these things are never just concrete, and I wonder to what extent you see, or your organization sees, what you're doing as informed by, like, kind of historical precedents on the left. Are there kind of people that you would look back to in the history of the left, you know, recent or distant, um, that inform what your organization is doing? I mean, obviously, you know, the copy of that's obviously a name kind of loaded with a, a great deal of history itself. Um, so I wonder if you could kind of talk about that, that issue of kind of historical precedent. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, what we're... Um, what we what we don't do is we don't we don't um, come and say like on the tenth congress of the communist international they decided upon this and that and that's how we do it today so we don't um, what we're doing of course is that we um, we, we read about and we try to learn about um, like historical attempts um, to build or rebuild. Uh, a strong, a strong left movement or a strong communist movement, and and there we have we, we like um, I don't know we are like 
reading reading texts from like the Second International to I don't know um, um, communist dis dissidents from the Soviet or late Soviet Union. So there is a there is a pretty broad um, um, spectrum. Spectrum. Yeah. spectrum. Um, so like we are. We, I guess we are, we are trying to use various um, various sources or various. We are trying to to read and learn about um, various um, historical experiences, um, and the goal the goal is not to focus on just one one historical um, line of the left, um, but to have a more broader broader perspective, and then. But then, um, like, combine it into a um, uh, coherent, coherent perspective. Like, we are not like, oh, this is good and that is good, and this third, this third option also sounds nice, and we just all take them. But we are like talking about all these different option experiences, and then try to see if they, if it's able to merge them together, see what we can um, learn and. What we can, how we can use them to to slowly build a co co coherent perspective for ourselves. Does it does it somehow make sense? Yeah, I I wonder if maybe you could I don't know give um, maybe one or two examples of um, texts that you're reading or um, you know yeah. historical periods that are kind of informing what you do and kind of how it informs it as well. Yeah. So, for example, um, in, in in August, um, we had a um, sort of um, um, summer summer school, and um, there we were we were discussing about this historic, uh, this debate of re reform or revol revolution, and um, we were for. One thing we did, for example, there, there we at the one hand we read um, parts of Lu Luxembourg's um, text on um, on I just I uh, just know the German name. In German it's called Massenstreik der Gewerkschaft, like her, one of her writings on the on the first Russian Revolution um, we, um, and on the relationship between um, um, union and party. Um, she's she's uh, writing about there. On the, on the other hand, we for example um, read from Johannes Anjoli, um, Transformation of Democracy, I guess you say in English, or Transformation of Demokratie in, in Deutsch. Um, so, and yeah, that, those are for example two authors we are we are regularly 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 <laughs> refer, referring to. Um, maybe I guess you you are next, and then um, in the back, and you again. Um, I guess it kind of picks up on what you were just saying. Um, you have this goal of uh, communist society, which look, like sounds very good. <laughs> and then there's education, political action, and uh, what was the third? The, the like social organizing, basically the mutual aid, is the kind of another term people would use for that. Um, but one can imagine a society that's, or a large group of people, or a working class even, that's very well educated, um, is uh, conducting mutual aid and campaigns to save the local park, uh, but we still live in capitalism. Mm -hmm. So, Going off what you just said, is a revolution necessary to overcome capitalism? And if so, kind of how do how do you conceive of that? And what does that have to do with uh, the party? You said at some point that um, a party is like a necessary part of this, but you're in the movement that's not exactly the same as the party. Um, so is a, is a revolution necessary and what what does your concept of the party have to do with that? Mm -hmm. I guess on a 
on a theoretical level, um, we, we can say, um, or, or like when we, when we are like ana analyzing society as it is with all the tools we got today, we can say yes, a revolution is necessary. At the other hand, um, this revolution is, as you said, um, like as as far away as it can be, and. I, I would say, I guess the first question is that at the, or was at the moment we, we get people together and they are like, basically they are pressing for reform. Still it's reform and not revolution. I would say, yeah, of course it's reform, but if, if the left is actually able to press for reform and win, that's a huge progress to right now. Like right now, nobody cares about Junge Linke. Nobody cares about the KPÖ or any other um, left organization in Austria. So, so when we actually come there, um, that we can fight uh, fight for reform and win, I, I I would be really glad. And then we can still still discuss on um, how we can manage this like transformative step uh, or this how we can actually manage revolution. I, I guess the, the, whole, the whole problem with revolution is that we have no, um, on a theoretical level, we know it's necessary, but when we have a look on history, we, we basically have no, no successful, or if we had successful um, revolutionary ex um, um, attempts in history, we, we wouldn't have to talk about it today. So I guess, the whole, the whole problem if, with revolution is that nobody really knows how to make a revolution. Um, but I don't think that we will find out... I don't think that we will um, find out by talking about it in an endless spiral, because we can't... We can't I guess we can't answer today how revolution will work. Does anybody know how reform works? I would say, or how, how do you mean? I would say, on a on a historical perspective, we have um, point, points in history where the left was actually able to fight for reforms and win. Um, I mean, in the end, um, maybe maybe they they were weren't successful in a, in a, like a original sense of. Um, so if, is reformatism the right word? Reformism. Like reformism of, of the second inter international, so reform reformism till we reach socialism, basically. That didn't happen, of course. But when you un just understand reform as fighting for um, concrete day to day um, needs of people within uh, the framework of current society, then I guess. Yeah, we, we, we have quite a few historical um, experiences where it actually worked. And a la the last thing is about the party. Um, in the in the talk we had before, there was the there was this whole, this whole point with um, I would uh, there is the saying of mosaic mosaic linke. Yeah, Do you pronounce it that way in English? Like a fragmented... Like yeah, a fragmented, like all small little groups and they all are kind of doing whatever. <coughs> and I, w I would strongly disagree. I guess that's a huge part of the problem. Um, this, this sort of everybody is everybody's founding their, their private group with their friends. So um, we have to s stop it <laughs> right now. Um, <laughs> and start, start start building bigger organizations and discuss within this organization um, within this organizations and somehow centralize the left to a certain extent and in this process of centralizing the left the, or the, the party is the, is the center of centralizing the left I would say um, it doesn't mean that there is no discussion discussion anymore, but there needs to be discussion within the party 
and not discussion like all over the place and nobody know actually knows what we are there, like there's no we are discussing the whole time but actually there's no outcome um, you were you were next and then oh who next then you then you First, I'm going to ask the same question as Ephraim, but maybe I can try to concretize the question a bit more. I wanted to ask, um, because you talked about that you discussed uh, the topic of reform and revolution, and um, in Reform and Revolution by Rosa Luxemburg, but also in like classical texts in the Second International, like The Road to Power, I think Kautsky uh, is contained in, um, they talk about the relation of like the unions and um, the long term goal of socialism, and they say, like, we need the unions, but not as something that can be affirmed, but as something that like shows its impossibility to reform in capitalism. Like, I think uh, regarding Bernstein, Luxembourg says something like, um, when we take the unions like head on as something that um, builds the word socialism or like builds uh, towards positive um, um, results. Then, um, if we think about it that way, then it loses its uh, teaching possibility for the working class that it has to organize differently and has to uh, has to do revolution in order to change their way in a qualitative way at all. And I just wanted to ask, like, um, can we? Is, is is there a road towards the question of making revolution possible now, if we like? have a positive concept of the unions that we like uh, follow as long till the revolution kind of uh, gets a question for the moment or is it like is there a difference on how socialists or like Marxists maybe um, work in unions than like other socialists or just like bourgeois politicians work in unions and is this somehow reflected like in the organization because like it seems to me that there's not just a question of do we also need revolution, but like how to work in a union is different uh, in the way that Rosa Luxemburg presents than as, for example, Bernstein conceptualizes. Um, mm -hmm. I, I would totally agree, and I would say there is currently a pretty, pretty big blank spot in in the Austrian Austrian left or in the communist um, movement in Austria concerning the unions. Um, I mean, um, I guess it's it's not something we as well, let's put it another way. Um, there is some sort of communist um, union organization in Austria, um, but they are pretty weak, and they're. The problem is, um, in former times, they were they were they had strongholds in, for example, um, um, in, in he heavy industry. Um, today, they are they are um, more or less focused on um, like the whole the whole um, area of, of social work. So, st having a strike in of the social workers is nice, but nobody really cares. So, um, this is even where they exist, they don't have, have re real power. Um, and I, I guess one, one, um, one outcome of this, that n at least as I know it, there is no, no ongoing or no real active discussion about what, what the role of unions could, um, could be, should be, um, what it, what, um, it is now and how maybe um, a social democratic union or a social democratic union member is behaving in a different way than a communist one. So, um, yeah, I guess I guess part of the problem is that we don't really have answers to the to the question you just you just asked. Mm. Okay, we have a few minutes left, so I guess we can um, keep keep in line. And uh, you next, then um, in the yeah you, <laughs> and then here in the front, and then we go back. 
Uh, I wanted to get back um, at the point of education because you were talking about it that you were you are reading things together and then discussing it and then you I guess you will have results in the end like what do we learn from it and I wanted to ask if you have something like an institutionalized way to handle it like for, like how do you integrate what you learn um, from what you're reading from the history um, in your politics? Is, or is there a process? How, how does it work? Hmm. Mm. There... Yeah, I mean, of course there is some... some there, are, there, is, there are results and of course um, what we are discussing um, within our educational work somehow um, influencing um, how how our members act in their in their um, like groups on the base level in the organization. So like how they act in their districts, what they what they maybe bring back from from the seminars they 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 wear on what, um, what they are talking about with with their um, comrades in the in their districts and so on. Um, but we don't have we don't have any like. Um, official papers passed or something, because um, it's most of the time it makes no not no real sense because nobody reads them first. So, for example, when we when we would have like half a year, we talk about I don't know, we we could talk the next um, the next year we could talk about our position towards unions and party. And then on our um, federal congress in 2024, we could pass the following statement. And in summer 2024, nobody would know um, what's in the statement, except um, except maybe those who are in the leading positions, and they all they know what's our position, what's our perspective anyway. Um, and besides, we have to, it's not that we can discuss, for example, this point for one year, and then we come to a conclusion and then we let it be, because as a youth organization, we have a pretty strong fluctuation. So um, there are constantly new people coming and there are constantly people dropping out. Um, so we have, basically, we are having all the discussions over and over again. And while we're having them over and over again, of course, they, they change somehow because there's a new input here or there's a new like um, development in world politics here and so on and so forth. But for example, our, our feminist standpoints, we discuss them the whole time, basically. And there is no end to this discussion in the way of, a, yeah, of some fixed outcome. So it's very individualized. So there's not, there's not really. It's it sounds a bit loose, right? So you you go to the summer school, you learn something, and then everybody goes back to their place and just sees what that person will do with it. Yeah, but I guess what the pe what people learn is no, no like when we are planning summer school. We are planning what people should learn there. Yeah. So, of course, and yeah, and then people people um, have like have all these dis discussions, and then um, they 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 go home with s some sort of, of shared idea. And I guess just writing down this shared idea like wouldn't wouldn't make it more con wouldn't really like strengthen it in that, that sense. Um, yeah. And so the, the Austrian left uh, has been quite uh, euphoric uh, within the last few months among them where reasons like the uh, electoral victory in Graz and also the Jumi uh, Linke is um, growing. And my question for you is like, do you think this will be sustainable? Um, because, I mean, if you look at the, at the European situation, let's say, of post-Stalinist parties, 
And you, I don't know, you can say, okay, the couple in Graz maybe had a similar development in Belgium. But on the other hand, in Germany, the Linkspartei is, I would say, in a fundamental crisis, even though it's not felt that strongly or as strongly as it is in crisis, maybe. For example, in the Czech Republic, the Communist Party um, was uh, actually defeated last year. So you seem to have a very uneven development of like, post Stalinist parties, and it seems to be, I don't know, maybe in the first glance, arbitrary or not really, right? Because you also talk about uh, uh, that you're part of the communist movement. And the question is then also, to what extent has this communist movement to be international? And what is the international, um, I don't know, uh, outlook for that? So, right, so, so maybe, do you think this euphoria or this growing success will be there in, I don't know, two years, let's say? Or do you think that there will be, um, I don't know, a huge hangover for the left in Austria? Mm -hmm. mm. I guess on, on a theoretical level, we can, again, um, of, of course, the communist movement has to be international. So um, we, can, we can agree on that pretty easily. So um, on, the, on, the, on the other hand, we probably can agree pretty easily that a real communist movement on an international level isn't like isn't really existing, as a communist movement in Austria isn't really existing. I mean, I, I, I told you before, like, um, um, in Junge Linke, we have a couple hundred members, and we're the biggest um, communist youth organization in this country. The Communist Party of Austria, they, they have, like, between one, five, and two thousand members. So we're talking about really small scale here. Um, so, um, like we are, we are starting to, or we are trying to, to start to rebuild. Um, or when, let's put it another way. When, when, when I'm talking about a, a, a communist movement, then it's basically a communist movement in the making, uh, and not a, not an existing one. And um, concerning concerning Graz. Um, I guess I, I actually I, I don't know how how the whole the whole um, situation in Austria will be in two years and the, if there will be anything left from the the uh, how did you call it euphoria, euphoria around uh, around this electoral um, um, victory um, but right now I at least I at least see a chance. Let's put it that way. So, with the with the renewal of, of the Communist Party on the federal level, starting about one and a half years ago, um, with the um, sort of um, getting closer between Junge Linke and the Communist Party, um, with the getting closer of the Communist Party on the federal level and in Styria, it's the first time that at least I experienced it that the Austrian left is somehow unifying. And that you could, you could say there is some progress going on. Progress on a really, really, like, starting on a really low level again. But still there's some sort of progress, and still there is some moving to the right direction. So, and it's not only Graz. So. I mean, Graz is amazing and all. Um, but it actually, it started before. And I would, I'm, I wouldn't even, or I, I would say there are there are quite a few steps who are who, who aren't that public, publicly um, discussed, who are also really important in this in this process of unifying, in this process of getting together and um, re rebuilding, um, rebuilding. Uh, or actually, in Austria, you would say, oh no, yeah, rebuilding uh, uh, left or something as a, as a left able to change things. 
Ich glaube, du warst das nächste, oder? Ja, I wanted to share an observation. I'm, I'm no expert on Austrian politics either, but I have read that Kenya Linke also emerged from a split from the, part, the Green Party in Austria, yeah. its youth organization. And it's very similar to, to the anti-AKW movement in Germany as well. Like in the 70s, you had movements against atomic energy production, yeah. nuclear, <laughs> yeah, against nuclear power energy. And then there was a party that was formed. And then this party got criticized because it became part of the establishment. And we got a new movement again that claims to represent the people. And now about, I, I wanted to hear your perspective now that you talked so much about splits and the need for unification and you see a progress in that and I wanted to maybe provoke a little bit and say it's more like a constant repetition mm -hmm. of wanting to make reforms and then becoming establishment and then having splits mm -hmm. and then noticing that nobody cares if you're just a small group and you need to change something, but in order to do that, you need to become a party and you need to play the game of the establishment. And what's your perspective on that? And is there a way out of the circle? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, what, what we have to, what, what we are trying to do or what we have to do is um, getting, getting influence without playing the game of the establishment or without just thinking politics as um, join, joining parliament and then I know then sitting there and becoming um, like fr friends with UFOP so. and I, you could also you could also frame the founding of Junge Linke actually as a unification um, because like in in 2016 or something, um, the the Green Party of Austria they basically kicked out their youth organization, and um, relevant or they're at the center of this youth organization, um, they remained organized. Uh, they came in contact with with KPÖ in two 2017, and in 2018. They, they merged with the old um, youth organization of KPÖ, which was also called Junge Linke. So you basically, the Junge Linke, as we, ha as we see today, um, resulted out of, the, like, out of the unification of the thrown out Koreans and the, like, the Junge Linke as, is, as it existed till then. So, and that was some sort of a, like, in this moment you have some sort of a new start. So, so I, I wouldn't totally agree on the on the justice split. Sorry. Well, if I may concretize, yeah. um, because it seems like you have something against the concept of splits, or you seem yeah. to maybe avoid an idea that splits also can have their leg legitimacy. Yeah. For example, if we if we also look back in history and the text you may be read as well, like the Bolshevik Menshevik split, for example, yeah. it came from a social democratic party in Russia that follow or it seems when you read Lenin in this time that this split made things clearer and yeah. it was a conscious de decision to make the split and to be like, okay, we, we seem to have different goals, we don't agree, then you go do your thing, like this mm -hmm. metaphor with the swamp. If you want to go to the swamp, do your thing, we're not going to do that with mm -hmm. you. And that seems to counterpose the framing of the need of unification and of always needing to go back together and to merge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, of, of course, there are like in history we have we have situations where splitting is the best idea. So, uh, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't say that the Bolshevik Menshevik split was necessarily the best idea. So, but okay. So, um, but I I think like um, in, in the current situation. Um, 
I think there is a tendency that leftists fight, leftists fight each other because nobody cares at them. So the only thing they can do is like um, go after other leftists. So, which is pretty boring, I guess. So, um, and then it's also when you have like when you have a perspective that you're fighting for, and when you have actually um, the chance of winning something. Um, then it becomes harder to split. Um, if there is nothing to gain, you can split in a thousand pieces, and it will make no difference. But in the moment you can actually gain something, or you can come in a position where you can gain something, and I would say right now we are we are at the, at the point where we can at least come in a position where we can gain something, um, then sticking together becomes more relevant. Um, yeah, and I mean when when I talk about the need for unification and so on, I mean I I, I mainly talk about uh, the current situation um, in Austria. I would say um, maybe before before we go on. Now it's um, four fifteen. Um, should we make maybe a last last round and then? Um, yeah, because the next event starts at five. Yeah. Neues Institutsgebäude, so we should also have time to go yeah. there. Yeah. Then, then maybe let's do three more questions or collect three more questions and then last round of um, answers and then we can go to Nick. Um, I guess, yeah, it was uh, like you and then maybe the person in front of you and uh, you. I have two, two related questions. Um, uh, one concern your independence or dependency on the Kaffee group. Yeah. So the first question, as you mentioned, you have this age limit. So when you turn 30, you cannot be a member of the organization anymore. So it seems somehow the natural course, even if you're independent, would be to go into the Kaffee group. Yeah. Uh, and then the second thing is with funding. I guess you're probably funded also by the Kaffee group to some extent, maybe not. Mm. So where is your funding coming from? What do you have any kind of funding? Um, so yeah, then that, that, this would be one question, where is your funding coming from? And the other question, how do you remain independent of the KPU when you have the age limit, for example? If at some point you don't agree with them anymore, how can you sustain your senior members? Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, i try to keep it short. Um, you see you you seem to be a little bit disappointed by the by the uh, fight, by, by the left fighting each other upon uh, history or also ideology, and then sometimes I have the impression that the young left or Fumi Linke is self about uh, a historic and also you mentioned today that the summer. The summer school and the reading groups are not here to uh, guide the membership into a strategic uh, position or uh, Richtung, uh, direction. direction. <laughs> uh, so I wanted to ask you if you think that this a historicity and also this open and uh, ideological reflection is somehow a progress or also an advantage upon other leftist groups in Austria or on an international scale? Or uh, do you think that uh, in a party or in a communist movement like the KPÖ in the first place and in the second place, uh, the communist movement of Austria or of Europe or on an international scale, this would be different and in, in a way uh, this open end uh, reflection of Jungi Linke is just a uh, characteristic of the youth organization or the youth movement and this can be different or this should be different in the future. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I really want to emphasize, I want to emphasize the question, question if you think it is a progress and why or if you think it is an advantage upon other leftist groups. Mm -hmm. yes. Maybe before you pose your question, I will, I will answer because otherwise I will forget parts. Of them. Um, so starting with the starting with the relationship to the KPU again. So I guess it's 
it's a great progress that actually, or when, when Junge Linke was, as it is today, founded in 2018, um, there, there wasn't really a party. Like, when you grew too old for Junge Linke, there wasn't really a, a party where we could say, yeah, go there. So, um, so with the renewal of the KPÖ, or of the Communist Party, I guess that, that's a qu quite a progress, that there is some sort of place where our older members or former members can, can get involved, um, can um, stick together, and so on. And if this, if this place wasn't there, or if the, the Communist Party wasn't that place, I guess, yeah, we would have a problem. So, um, but fortunately, that's not, we aren't in that situation. Um, concerning um, the funding, we don't get any money from, from the Communist Party. Uh, we don't get any money from the state. Um, we're basically, all, all we're doing is, um, we machen noch so fünf Minuten. Okay, also so fünf Minuten zum Maximal. Ah ja, wir sind letzte Runde. Basically all, all the money we, we have and all the money we we are using um, is coming from what the members are like all, all our members um, pay uh, pay a small amount on a um, monthly basis. And we have um, like I'm not sure if you call it sponsor membership. I don't know. For example, if you are turned 31 and you are you you are a former Junge Linke member and now you get a more or less a decently paid job, then you can become sponsor member <coughs> and you pay instead of 10, you pay I don't know 20 months or something. And yeah, and then uh, like there is a, there is a bit of an amount. Um, of money we, we, we get, for example, when we make parties or something. But that, that's where our money is coming from. Um, and to the, to the question about the like, analy analytical or theoretical standpoints, I would say um, I would say there is a difference between between no like no theoretical or no analytical direction and um, writing everything down. We don't we don't we don't write like long analyses of whatever, and then all our members are reading it. So still our educational program and all the discussions um, we have within Junge Linke, they have a direction. People, people are um, taking, taking certain points out of this discussion with, with them home and they are taking them into their um, ground organizations and so on and so forth. So I wouldn't say that um, not, not writing long pamphlets is, is being, being without any I don't know, guidance or something. Um, and I think I think discussion within the left is pretty pretty important. I mean, discussion within the left is important because nobody really knows where to go. That that means we somehow have to figure it out, and we have to figure it out by discussing with each other. So, but also, um, I guess because first I, I like had this emphasis of unification. It, I guess it also depends on who is. Who is unifying? So I don't think because at the beginning we talked about the, this like fragmented left with all the thousand groups. I don't think all these thousand groups have to unify. <coughs> I think some relevant groups have to start start making it better, growing bigger, and when a thousand splintered groups to merge and make it bigger, you can forget about the other 989. So. Discussion, discussion is good, but you don't have to discuss, discuss with any leftists somehow around. So um, I don't know with, with with some leftists who who are stuck like in the 30s and 
like dream, dreaming of the rebor rebirth of the Stalinist Soviet Union. Yeah, I mean, I, I see no point in discussing with th with them. So leave leave them rot. And then on the <laughs> other on the other hand, um, there are there are leftists where I would say like, let's discuss and let's see if we can and um, somehow work together. Um, Last question. Yeah, as we talked about the necessarily international character of the communist movement and uh, the seemingly better shape of KPÖ and Jung Linke, I'm wondering, is that just an appearance or is it really the case? And if so, uh, did this just happen by accident or are there important lessons to learn for Germany, for example, and organizations in other countries? Uh. I don't think that it happened by accident. So, um, I guess the, I mean, it's like I, I think about the short short answer without going into the history of the last couple of years. Um, I guess in in Austria we have some sort of advantage that. Like we could build, we could build Junge Linke basically from the scratch, um, and it's a different situation than you have, for example, in Germany with a solid like the youth organization of the Linke, which already exists in basically all all um, federal states, which is terribly splintered, um, like and it's it's an organizational mess basically, and like getting this organizational mess. Altogether, it's just a bit of a different situation. Still, um, still, I guess you, you can you can learn from what happened in Austria over the last um, four, two, three, four years. Um, yeah, but I guess it's going into that in detail. Then um, Andreas would have to come back. <laughs> and, um, yeah. Um, tell us to stop. So maybe um, let's make a point here. And um, you all, you all know where to go next, or yeah, yeah? okay. Andreas will tell us. Okay. Yeah. <laughs>